Oh, but wait, where did this mysterious box come from? Actually, we might be f <laughs> Holy ball sack! Let's get back to that mystery package I was talking about earlier. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know what? I'm doing pretty great today too because there's something about Vintage Max that I just really like. And I got my old 2CI here. This computer, when it came out, I think it was over $5,000 back in 1989. There's some experiments I want to do with this on the show. So stick around for those. But the problem is we really can't do much with this right now. Here's why. Let's play a game. How many missing components are there? And time's up. Right now, it's a pretty hollow box that doesn't do much. I think, uh, yeah, there used to be some kind of hard drive in here. <laughs> Looks like we got all of our RAM maxed out. I'm not sure what kind of board this is, but I think we're missing a video card. And we're missing a floppy drive. I have salvaged components from this computer from past experiments way before I started this show. And I still have some spare parts lying around. However, the floppy drive, I don't think I ever had. I think when I picked up this computer, the drive was gone. So we're gonna have to get a little creative and piece some things back together to get this thing back online. And here's how. I happen to have a Macintosh 2 video card, which I believe had a color palette of 16 plus million colors and it could simultaneously display 256 colors at once. And for what, I think this computer came out in 89. For that time, that was really impressive. We also have a bunch of conversion technology to hook this thing up to various peripherals. Also, I have an external floppy disk drive, which works over this connection. <laughs> because I don't have the plastic caddy to hold the internal hard drive in place, I have this external SCSI drive. Not sure how big it is, I think four gigs or so. So if we all come together, hopefully we can make a barely operable Macintosh 2C. I. Oh, but wait, where did this mysterious box come from? Yes, that is another peripheral that I will unbox later. I just got it from Shmibe, and it's now here, so we'll hook that up later. Let's start with the video card installation. This should be a breeze. So we have this, and it should just line up and go in, right? And, uh... There we are. I don't know if there's any screws or anything needed, but uh, seems seems pretty steady. Normally, I would now put the hard drive and the floppy drive back in, but again, I don't have uh, the caddy, so we're just gonna have to skip that and go external for those. So I believe internally, that is it. Close her back up. Bon appetit. Our next phase is getting all the external components hooked up. So. I have, oh shit, I just realized. This isn't gonna work. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, this interface is not on this computer. I'm just gonna say screw it to the floppy disks for now, but not all hope is lost, I think. Actually, we might be f <laughs> Hang on, I'll get back to that in a moment. We may not even need that. However, what we will need is something to boot off of. Now, Macs can boot off external drives, but it, it depends on what kind of system software is on here. If it's a version that's not compatible with this computer, we may have to install something, but we really can't if we can't hook up the floppy disk drive. However, I do have another potential solution. I'll get to that in a bit. This looks kind of pretty, actually. It's like Russian dolls. Also, we have conversion technology. So, um, we may, hang on. Uh, none of this stuff is going to be very useful. Yeah, hang on though. See, kind of hand fingers. This will be nice though, because I would still like to hook a monitor up to this thing to see if I can get any video output. So this will convert, I forgot what video interface that is, but I think it's DB15. And then we go to VGA. And it looks like we do have full size SCSI on the back as well, as uh, in addition to serial and Apple desktop bus and all that good stuff. So let's just see what we can do with what we've got. If I have to order more stuff, we have Shimibe and Craigslist. Yes. Nothing's on fire yet, which is good because sometimes this 2CI likes to spark when I plug things in. Uh, yeah, let's see. Got the monitor on. 
And we're about to power up the 2CI. Hopefully something works. I'm not expecting it to boot on anything, obviously. There's no hard drive hooked up yet. I just want to see if it works. Oop. Oh, the button won't go in all the way. I can hear the fan turning on. The stupid button. Okay, hang on, let me try this. These Apple desktop keyboards have a power button built in. Just gonna try using that. There we go. Hey, we got video and we should see a, like a blinking question mark floppy disk or something. This is actually kind of cool. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is actually kind of cool because I don't think I have interfaced with this thing in like eight years or so. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've used this computer. This is nice. We're bringing it back from its slumber. All right, so the next phase is power for this Club Mac disc over here. Oh, I might need more extension cords. <laughs> Did someone order some more outlets? It was me. It was me all along. Okay, I'm gonna shut this guy down. Nothing personal. Hook up the SCSI. There's just something really satisfying about clipping in the old SCSI cables. I don't know, I just like it. It's better than screwing them in, just a nice little click sound. Install it on the back. And if everything worked, it should make a sound when I turn it on. There it goes. I like the sound of old Macintosh, like Apple hard drives. I don't know what it is, I just, I like them. All right, let's go back to the keyboard. Uh, okay, there's a shortcut I have to press. There's like a key combination to force the system to boot external. Oh, option, shift, delete or something. Crap, I gotta look it up again. <laughs> let's just boot it up, see what happens first. Holy ball sack! It connect, what? Oh, it, it found the disc. This is great. Oh, and we do have a Connectix RAM doubler apparently. Okay. Holy shit. This is amazing. <laughs> I thought I'd have to jump through some more hoops to get this thing to boot because I couldn't get this external system to boot with one of my power books. So I was like, oh, maybe it won't work with anything, but actually it's working with this 2CI. Well, son of a buck. It looks pretty good on an LCD. Oh man, we're running in one bit color. Ooh, too exciting. Oh, and forgive my little mistake earlier. I think the keyboard is called an extended keyboard. And that is the button I can use to power up the computer. I also have an Apple desktop bus mouse too, so we can actually interact with the system. I just now gotta plug it in. But yeah, we got a mouse and no traction. Well, I couldn't really find a mouse pad, but I found an old screenplay I wrote for a film I never released. I'm just gonna use that. Okay, that still works like shit. Okay. You know, I'm not 100% sure, but with how many times I've done hard drive swaps with these older computers, the hard drive originally from this computer might be the one inside here. Fun fact. Any hoozle, I got an OS X uh, Panther pad. So that kind of works. <laughs> oh, this thing is still like really freaking janky. Wow. I don't know if adjusting, oh shit, there goes a ball. There goes the ball. I gotta hold it in place. Man, this thing just does not want to work. The reverse side of the mouse pad. <laughs> that works better. Wow, we really needed a lot of traction. Okay. Oh man, I... I like the old clicking sound of these mice. Oh, window shade, that's right. Oh, I'm getting a lot of like nostalgia right now. Forgive me. <laughs> system 7 was the first operating system I ever used. Let's get some color back in here. Let's go to monitors and go to 256 colors. And there we go. All right, wow. Cool. Looks like we have trash. System 7 and car. Car sounds exciting. It looks like there were, oh my gosh, I remember making some of these things. Oh, a sound edit document? Is sound edit even on here? Oh my gosh, there's, dude, we got FileMaker, HyperCard. Dude, we got all sorts of goodies on this thing. Microsoft Word, MacWrite, Photoshop. Uh, I guess a System 7.5 installer, that might be what's on here, I don't know. Dude, yeah, car, this is, a, this is the old Photoshop. Icon. Holy bazonkers. This has got to be like 0.63 or something. Yeah, 0.63. Thomas Knoll, 1988. Don't call that number. That probably doesn't work anymore. Wow, this is great. Holy shit. <laughs> so much uh, good stuff on here. 
And it's really responsive too, man. I mean, this was one of the faster 68K machines at the time. Uh, it was a 2CI, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty beefy. Let's see how much RAM is in this thing. I know we have a RAM doubler. Eight megs of RAM, seriously? I thought we had way more than that in here. I think this is expandable up to 128. Uh, and I think the RAM doubler might be giving us some more RAM. I have no idea how the frick that thing works. Oh, yep, that's right, the menu isn't sticky. I usually always hold down my mouse button when I go through menus anyway. Let's go to our extensions manager. Yeah, the RAM doubler is enabled. Okay, well, that's good news. All right, so far so good. I just love how responsive this is, and it works with this display perfectly. I am one happy son of a bitch. So, let's get back to that mystery package I was talking about earlier. In fact, that is one thing I want to use with a whole bunch of vintage Macs. Because it could be useful. But I first want to test it out on this 2CI. So let's have a look. Okay, so I might have made a teeny tiny miscalculation with how big this thing is. <clears throat> but I will tell you, it is very beautifully packaged. Very nice job. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Apple CD 300 caddy loading external CD drive. Okay, so maybe it's not the most symmetrical layout right now, but uh, <laughs> I don't really, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep it stacked for now. But yeah, Apple CD 300 caddy loading. My only concern is the cable it came with doesn't have that smaller type of SCSI port. Well, this is kind of a buzz kill. But not all hope is lost. So I don't have the type of SCSI cable that lets me daisy chain. Otherwise I would just daisy chain the CD300 from this uh, Club Mac hard drive. So I'm gonna need to order one of those cables and revisit that. But that wasn't the main goal, getting this thing up and running for today anyway. So I guess we can just take a look at this later. The main goal was to get the 2CI booting again. However, I would still like to test this CD300 with the cable provided. And I have power books that accept this interface. So stick around for a future tech video log because I will test this out on that power book. And also stick around for some more 2CI action where we explore all of the other files and programs that are on this hard drive because uh, I haven't really booted this thing up in years. It'll be fun. I don't even know what's on there. And I'm also thinking this 2CI should be the computer I revisit the Adobe Premiere 1.0 topic on. I cannot wait to try editing video in Adobe Premiere 1 on a 68K Mac running System 7. The 2CI is gonna be our Petri dish for that. So please subscribe if you haven't, stick around and check back soon because I wanna show you all that stuff and take you on the misadventures with me. But I'm still calling today a win. Thanks for sticking with me, catch the crazy, and pass it on. Oh hey, something different just happened right as you were about to leave. Now all of a sudden I can't get it to turn on. Yeah. Curse, you struck right at the end there. Won't turn on. Well, shit.